guys and welcome back. I'm Rachel O'Leary and today I'm taking a little bit of a break from the fish. After the drama of the leaking big boy tank and the flurry of activity to collect fish, I wanted to do something that was a little bit calmer for my brain. Um, I'm going to be at the catfish convention all weekend. It's going to be hectic. So I wanted to do something that was going to really just slow things down and let me relax a bit. A good friend of ours is getting married in a couple weeks and... I have this big beautiful blue bowl and I thought that I would make them a wedding present. I mean, we're all in our 40s, you know, we don't need more crock pots or tea towels. So I thought I would make them something cool, like one of these gardens that they can just toss in the yard, set it and forget it, and just enjoy. Now, the inspiration for this came from my hens and chicks, which are known as Semper Vivum. And what Semper Vivum means is literally live forever. So I thought I had kind of a nice double meaning. I'm going to start today by making up some of my potting mix. I do a mix of coconut coir, poultry grit, and perlite. Uh, it's a well-draining soil that holds humidity well, but it doesn't cause a lot of root rot. So I'm going to mix that up in my trash can. Um, I have some hot water for the coconut coir, and then I just have bags of the other stuff. And I've pulled together a bunch of plants from my various succulent gardens, and we'll see what we can create. Let's get started. Now I keep or I keep buying these little trash cans because they're absolutely great for mix pre-mixing substrates um, and being able to keep keep the bugs out. And I buy the coconut choir in these big 11 pound blocks. Um, I forget how much it is. Maybe like 15 bucks, 12 bucks, I don't know. But this is a deceptive amount of product as this stuff really expands. Um, the, as I mentioned to you guys in the past when I was building my succulent garden, one of the things I really like about using this particular media is that it's renewable and it's not destructive uh, to, to nature. So you can use it without the guilt that goes along with using something like peat. Um, and again, it expands really well and it's biodegradable. Um, it can retain a ton of water. It's good for root formation. It's 100% free of pathogens and weeds, and it's just really fantastic um, to mix into a lot of homemade potting mixes. And as you add hot water to it, it just expands like crazy. Now you can use cold water, it just takes a little bit longer. So what I like to do is just pour it over top and let it absorb. Um, if I don't have enough, this is a gallon of water. Um, if I don't have enough water in here, then I will uh, grab some more cold water. But you can see it's pretty, pretty impressive how much it expands. And again, I just slowly pour it over and it falls apart and that's all there is to it. I'm definitely gonna need more water. See, the cold water doesn't absorb quite as easily. It takes a second or so longer, but it's still doing the trick. The water in the greenhouse here isn't really cold. It's in the mid-70s, so, but it's certainly not warm. Now, you don't want this to be totally saturated. You just want it to be fluffy. This is so much product. I had no idea. They say it expands 500%, but didn't really expect it to. So I'm just going to pull a bunch of this up into my container and then mix in the perlite and the chicken grit. Kind of equal parts each. Now the chicken grit and the perlite will make sure that this stuff doesn't compact and uh, potentially rot the roots. And this will hold the moisture so that the plants don't dry out too much. Um, they shouldn't have to really water this garden unless we are having a really particularly dry spell. And the hopes is, is that it will be very hands off low maintenance for them. Let me show you the pot. Now 
Now this is a relatively shallow pot. I didn't want it to be too small because I wanted to give these plants a bit of room to grow. And I've just taken a little river rock and put it over the hole in the bottom so that as I add my potting mix, it doesn't fall out. Um, a drilled pot is definitely best for succulents. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of my coconut fiber in there. stuck to my foot. I'm going to fill it about halfway full with this and then I'll add in my grit and perlite. And the goal is to get the substrate right about up to the lip of this bowl. Now it will settle a little bit when this stuff dries out, but mixing in the other ingredients for our custom mix will help prevent it shrinking down too much. And I had really good luck with this stuff outside in my um, in the succulent garden that I built. If you guys haven't watched that video, I'll link to it so that you can get caught up. And in this little garden, I'm going to put in Semper Vivums, which are the hens and chicks. I'm going to put in some ice plant and um, some sedum, some stone crops. Where are my scissors? Now this is chicken grit, it's granite, so it's insoluble, and it's made to aid in the digestion of chickens. Um, if you keep chickens and you don't keep them on dirt, you need to make sure that there's grit in their diet. And it's really, really cheap. I think it's like, that's 25 pounds, I think it was like $10 for 25 pounds. And it's absolutely fantastic to mix into these mixes. I'll probably add some more of that, but I'm going to put my perlite in there first. I'm definitely going to add some more. Now, because the coconut is so nice and light, it's really easy to mix up these substrates. Or potting mixes, if you will. I'm a fish geek. I call everything substrate. All right, and then I have my perlite, um, which is, again, pH neutral, and it just helps with soil aeration as well. We don't want this to get super compact. A lot of the commercially produced cactus and succulent soils are really, really dense, and I found that I a lot of times my plants will get root rot um, just from them being so hard that the roots can't seem to spread out and take off. Which is why I started mixing my own. And it's actually way cheaper, especially if you buy in bulk. And I'm just trying to get a nice even mix here. Now, I tend to use a little less perlite than chicken grit, but that's just a personal preference. So you can see we're just about up to the surface, and it's pretty firm, but it's not hard. Uh, next, I'm going to prep my plants. And as I mentioned, Semper Vivum, which are these hens and chicks, the name actually means, you know, to live forever. So I thought it would be kind of a neat, neat gift to give them a garden that should live forever. And all you do when you're transplanting these is you want to take off all the dead material. Um, so I have some mats of it that I pulled off some of my strawberry pots. I often will grow these guys in strawberry pots. So I'm just going to pull off a lot of the dead material so that there's like this little stalk exposed that I can insert into my media. Now these guys can tolerate our really, really cold winters. They're drought tolerant since they're succulents. Um, and I showed you guys this summer, I even had some flower. Now once they flower, the mother plant dies. But all of these were around my mother plant. Well, these and many, many more. So they do continue to live. 
Um, and I think that they can flower every couple of years. But some of these get massive, like the parent plant of these was about this big around, so it's really pretty cool. Uh, and I just picked out a couple different varieties of this particular, of Sempervivum. Uh, I'm just going to lay them on the soil here as I clean up more. See, this is a green variety that has pink tips. Now with their wedding being a fall wedding, um, these are going to go dormant before too long. But I still think they'll get a kick out of... But I still think they'll get a kick out of their, you know, live forever succulent garden. Now I'm probably going to end up putting these hens and chicks on opposite sides of the pot. Maybe some around the edges, I don't know. I haven't actually ever done this before. So we're learning together, or experimenting together. But I thought it would be a fun project for my brain. It's been a stressful week, I've got a long weekend coming up. And uh, I thought it'd be a nice gift for our friend. I'm just knocking off all the old soil too, gently. Again, removing all the dead, dead leaves so we've got fresh, shiny new ones. All right, and then I also got some of this ice plant. Now, this is Little Pickles is the trade name for it, and I absolutely love it. It gets these beautiful little yellow flowers, and you can see it's in this same mix from out in my garden. Um, it, you can see it's been throwing out babies like crazy, and it's covered a, a good portion of that garden, so I thought this would be a great one to share with them as it seems really easy, and it's quite attractive. I'm just setting everything out. Um, and then I have... A couple pots of this, um, which is a sedum. Uh, this is sedum or stone crop uh, Angelina, and this stuff grows like mad. And you can see it does this neat trailing stuff. So I thought I'd put that around the front to sort of trail down a little bit. And then I may have to go pick some more stuff from out in my garden. We'll have to see. So I'm going to start with the little pickles. I'm just going to put this off to the side a bit, and I just make a well. And I'm placing the roots right into the soil and pressing it in. Uh, you don't want to bury the bottom of the plant or it can rot. With these, stick my finger in, drop that root in, press the soil around it. I'm going to go ahead and plant these and then we'll take a look together. So what I've done here is I just grabbed a few little scrap pieces of Sirius stone, which is a landscaping stone, really commonly used in aquascaping. I think it's really pretty and has some interesting character, and it holds up well to the weather. So I just stuck a few pieces in here for some visual interest, and then I've taken my plants and done little groupings of them. Now, as you can see from this piece, this stuff spreads and, over and climbs over, so it's really pretty darn neat. So I've stuck some in between some rocks around the edges in the hopes that most of this will cascade over in time. And then these hens and chicks and my little pickles will cover in between. Now they could always add additional succulents should they like. Pull these out, root them in between rocks, rocks along their walkway, whatever they want. But I think it's a great little gift and a good starter to a succulent garden and it looks nice. So I hope they like it, and it's been really relaxing for me to go ahead and just throw this together pretty quickly. Let's take a closer look and see how beautiful these plants are. And see all the different textures. So I think that's what I like about succulents the best. Hopefully this does well for them and they really enjoy it. As always, thank you guys for your continued support. Let me know below uh, what you think.